Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to do the last video for today, which is drafting a statement of account to your client. Okay, um, almost always it's going to be for non-litigious matters and you will get a question similar to this. Okay, it'll say, you and your client agree that you will charge a thousand rand per hour for court and consultations and preparation, 60 rand a letter, 50 rand for a telephone call, 500 rand per hour for travel time, 5 rand per kilometer for travel costs. Then they will give you, that will also might be written in like a story sum story, okay? And then it'll say, you represent Mr. X in a criminal matter. You consult for one hour and then prepare for trial for two hours after phoning the prosecutor and getting an email from him, the prosecutor. You travel 60 kilometers to King Williamstown for the trial, which was obviously the following day, and finish the trial in three hours. Account to Mr. X. Okay. On page 44 of your notes is an example of a non-litigious matter, spill of costs, but the important part here is that you are going to um, say tax invoice number 2346 or whatever of 18 whatever you want to do give it a date mr x okay and we'll say fees and disbursements due to um, squires or whatever your firm is called okay then you're going to start with a date, let's say the 1st of March 2020, while we were, well, it was before lockdown. It says you consult for one hour. So we'll say consultation with Mr. X. One hour. How much is that? Well, it tells us. It's a thousand rand. Okay. Then you prepare for trial for two hours after phoning the prosecutor. So call to prosecutor. How much for a call? 50 rand. I get an email from the prosecutor. Email from prosecutor. How much for an email? Well, it's a letter. 60 Rand. Okay. And then I prepare. So the 1st of March 2020, preparing for trial for two hours. How much is my prep time? 1,000 Rand an hour. So 2,000 Rand. Okay. Then let's say the following day. I'm now going to the trial in King Williamstown. Travel to King Williamstown. So it takes me 30 minutes. If it takes you 40 minutes, write 40 minutes. You write however long it takes. And my traveling time is 500 Rand an hour. So here it's 250 Rand. Do you see that? Now there's travel costs involved. But remember we spoke about travel time being a fee and travel costs being a disbursement. So we're not going to deal with disbursements at this stage yet. We're only dealing with fees. Then, attending to trial. For three hours, huh? 3,000 Rand. And obviously I travel back. Okay, so my subtotal is 1,000 plus 50 plus 60 plus 2,000 plus 250 plus 3,000 plus 250. And I get 6,610 Rand. Okay, 
if I'm a VAT vendor, I will now add VAT and get rid of it so I don't put it on disbursements. 991.50, which gives me a subtotal of 7601.50. Now I add my disbursements, which was travel costs, 120 kilometers times five rand per kilometer gives me 600 rand. So my total, and I'm squeezing it in now, is 8,000. 200 and 1 rand and 50 cents. That's not difficult, eh? Okay. Sometimes they mix it up slightly. And so let's say the question was exactly the same and we got a subtotal of 6610. I added my bat, which was 991 Rand and 50 cents. Which gave me 760150. And then I added my disbursements, which was my travel costs, which was 600 Rand. Okay. But let's say, for example, the question said, Mr. X had given you a deposit of a thousand Rand. Where do you think you take the deposit off? Well, let me give you the quick and quick answer is that you wait until right at the end and then you minus deposit. You see that? Okay. What happens if you were representing Mr. X and Mr. Y, okay, and you needed to account to Mr. X only, then obviously your subtotal is going to be the same. You're going to add that, you're going to get a subtotal, you're going to add the disbursement, you're going to get a subtotal. And let's say there's no talk of deposits, then obviously we're going to divide that by 2, and X will owe me 8. 201.5 8 201.5 divided by 2 x will owe me 4012.25 and y will owe me 4102.25 okay what happens if mr part of the question is that mr x gave you a deposit for himself only then do you agree that you're only going to take that deposit off here? Because if you took the deposit off before you divided it by two, then Mr. Y is also getting a benefit of that deposit and we don't want that. Okay. And that's how we work out a statement of account. When you look at your notes on page 44 and 45, right near the end, you'll see what they've done as well as they've said the fees, then VAT. Okay, then you add the disbursements. And then if there's any um, deposits, we're going to take it off right at the end. Okay, that's it. Good luck with your exam. I'm sure you'll do fine.